Did you know that in the Hunter Call of the Wild, there is a thought-to-be extinct animal that you can hunt on Tiawara National Park that is not native to the reserve? I was so intrigued by the thought of finding this mythical creature that I decided to drop everything I was doing in the game and go on to Tiawara to see if I could find it myself. I'm gonna save you guys the suspense of an intro and let's get right into it. So, you might be wondering to yourself what this so-called extinct creature could be, and up until yesterday, I had no idea this even existed. I found out about it from the Call of the Wild wiki on Fandom, which has information on every weapon, reserve, animal, and basically everything else in the game. I just started my Great One grind on Leighton Lakes to see if I could find myself a Great One Moose, and I was looking through the wiki to see all of the fur and rack variations that the moose could have. However, as I was reading the main description of the moose, I noticed that there was a subsection below that I hadn't seen before. The title of the section was Tiawara Moose. Now me, being an average player at the game, and understanding that Tiawara does not have moose native to its reserve, I was intrigued to read what this had to say. This section reads, On Tiawara, a thought extinct single moose can be hunted and photographed on the second to last story mission, Last of Its Kind. This moose is considered to be bugged or at least has strange game behavior. He leaves no footprints, makes screams very often, and is extremely tenacious. Now with how cryptic this description was, it made me want to find this moose even more. So I loaded into my Tiawara map and I began my hunt. Now I knew this was going to be an extensive hunt, since the subsection on the Tiawara moose said that it could only be found by completing all but the last mission. That is, the story missions at least, not the side quests. Now if you are unfamiliar with the way that story missions work in Call of the Wild, each reserve has its own unique storyline that comes with its own guide slash narrator that helps you through the missions. Now I did turn off narrator voices just because it messes with you when you're trying to hunt and listen to ambient sounds. However, I did keep subtitles on, so just imagine every time you see subtitles it's someone talking with a New Zealand accent. Anyway, the first missions on Tiawara are extremely mundane. Basically, the first third of the missions involve you driving around, or if you don't have the ATV DLC, then running around a lot of parts of the reserve and just picking up trash from tourists and basically just learning about the reserve and its history. The history part is cool, the trash part is not so fun. However, they're extremely simple and anyone can do it. Your tour guide also gives you the equivalent of a GoPro with an action harness on it so that you can wear it while hunting. The task being to get footage for a marketing advertisement for the reserve. Another major major plot point of the missions, which is kind of funny because this is a hunting game, is the fact that Tia War is also being used as a movie set, which is just very funny to me for some reason. Basically, you're tasked with going around and cleaning a bunch of the movie set up as well. Once you get through these missions, your guide will begin telling you a story. She'll begin telling you about moose that used to be seen back in the 1950s. While they were supposedly urban legend, she said that she saw one with her own eyes when she was a kid, and they even made eye contact before it ran back into the forest. The way that she describes it sounds almost like a paranormal sighting, or even one of those mythological creature sightings such as Bigfoot or a skinwalker. After she tells you this story, it is a fat minute before she does actually talk about the moose again. So, I continued on with my quest. A few missions later, you're tasked with replacing the batteries in a trail cam that happened to go out. While only one of the trail cam's batteries needs replaced, you're asked to check on all three cameras. Now, I've seen a lot of movies where there's three things that someone needs to check on, and the first two, ah, oh, there's nothing suspicious with them, but the third one, there's something completely unexpected, and I was fully believing that there was something that was going to happen here, but this is what I saw. So you keep completing these side missions that would take quite a bit of time honestly if you don't have the ATV DLC as they do expand across the entire map. So you guys are probably asking yourself when does the moose come into play again and I'm going to tell you right now. The different segments of the moose quest seem to be evenly spaced out as the first part of it was when you got about a third of the way through the first missions and then the second part of it is about two thirds of the way. This moose related mission starts off with your guide telling you about moose tracks in the nearby area and that you should go and investigate. And as you can see me doing here, I am currently following the moose tracks to see where they lead. While you track down these footprints, your guide actually fills you in on the history, telling you about 10 moose were shipped over from Canada to New Zealand, and while some were able to adapt and survive in their new environment, other ones were not able to, and unfortunately perished very quickly. Since all of this took place in the 1950s, the one that we are tracking down most likely is the last of its kind, and is probably the son of the moose that the guide saw when she was younger. After following the tracks for a brief moment, you will come across some vegetation that the moose appeared to have eaten off of, and right after that, the tracks end cold, adding a little bit more elusiveness and even paranormality to the situation. 
Now we are entering into the final part of the Tiawara Moose Hunt. And if you've watched the video this far, I'd just like to thank you for doing that. This is the first time I've done a video in a format like this, so I didn't really know what to expect going into it, but it was actually a lot of fun to make. So if you guys did enjoy this video, I would really appreciate it if you liked the video or even subscribed to my channel. And I also love reading comments, so if you guys want to comment down below your favorite animal to hunt in Call of the Wild, I'd very much appreciate that. And now, let's talk about the final prep into finding this elusive moose. After all this exploring and cleaning up movie set props and finding different parts of your guide's past that she's telling you about and kind of her personal life, you finally get to this one mission where you have to go up to this abandoned helicopter on top of one of the tallest mountains in Tiawara. Obviously you can see me struggling to get up on top with the ATV because I chose one of the more unorthodox routes on getting up to the top. Once you get to the top of the mountain however, this is what the helicopter looks like. Your guide fills you in on how she and some other members of her crew in the helicopter almost died in this crash. There are two objects that you need to recover from this crash before the mission is complete a hunting rifle, and your guide's necklace that she lost. She then asks you to leave the necklace at a nearby outpost for her to pick up later. Finally, after reaching the outpost and dropping off the necklace, your guide will begin talking to you again about how she apologizes that this wasn't the trip you were planning, and she will immediately get cut off by this. Now, saying that I got chills down my spine when I heard this would be an understatement. This elusive Tiawara moose that I had been hunting for a few hours now was right outside this outpost. And while this sounded just like a normal moose call, there was just something surreal about hearing this potentially extinct moose making a warning call from the distance. The first thing I noticed when the moose started to make its warning call is that this call came from way farther out than a normal moose would make. But because the range on this call was so far out, it allowed me to find it much easier. There were footprints right next to the cabin so I decided to follow them straight in the direction of the warning call. As I began closing in on the moose, the guide told me that I had options. I could either photograph the moose and choose to leave it and let it live on the reserve still, or I could take the shot at quite possibly one of the rarest trophies in the game. While it seemed like I could only choose A or B, I wanted to make sure that I could do both of them. As I crept closer to the call and got a good look at the clearing ahead of me, I finally saw it, the T. Awara Moose. Now while this moose's trophy rating was not high enough to score diamond, this was still a pretty impressive specimen. And one of the things you'll probably notice right off the bat is that this moose has a distinct fur variation. The wiki has this fur variation labeled as mocha, and it almost seems to be a variation of the piebald fur type. After staring at the moose for a while, I didn't really want to get any closer and risk spooking it, especially knowing that this one was much more timid than a normal moose, so I thought to myself, I'll just take the picture right here, and then I'll shoot the moose. But this happened. Now you can see me sit in shock for a short moment because I honestly thought that I lost the moose. I didn't think that you could still hunt the moose after you took the picture, and I, uh, you just see me sitting here like, did I just blow my chance? But if you look closely at the description of the Tiawara moose, it says that it can be hunted and photographed. So this was a huge relief to me because I then realized this moose was still on the map and I still had a chance at shooting it. I made the short trek to the clearing where the moose was standing, but this is immediately where I became confused. I kept following the moose tracks, but the second I got to the spot where it was standing, they just disappeared. This is where I remembered that this moose doesn't leave any footprints like the description said, and it only leaves the footprints that the missions laid out for me. I yet again began to close in on the position of the moose, and as I did and got closer and closer, this unsettling warning call from the moose became louder and louder. Just so you guys can get the same feeling that I felt when I was approaching this moose, I'm going to play the footage without any commentary just so you can feel how eerie it is when you hear the distant call of this moose with nothing else around but the forest.
And there you have it. Definitely one of the more interesting... Definitely one of the more interesting quests in the game, to say the least. There was something bittersweet about hearing that last call that just interrupted me. While it was very unsettling to hear this moose constantly sending out warning calls, I was so used to it at that point that it was almost even more intense after when there was just complete silence. This was a really fun hunt to do just because it's a pretty simple hunt, you just have to go through a few hours of gameplay, and you can find yourself a pretty cool looking moose. Now this video is mainly meant as a tutorial for people who do not know about the Tiawara moose, but I want to ask a question to those watching this video who have hunted the moose themselves. Is it possible for this moose to score diamond? I tried to research it myself, but I didn't end up finding any articles related to this. The only thing it talked about is that sometimes people will find moose that don't have the mocha variation and will actually just have a typical moose fur type. If anyone has an answer to that question, leave it down in the comments because I would love to know and that is the end of the video so I really hope you guys enjoyed this kind of different video as I said before I have never really done a tutorial video like this so if you did enjoy the video it would really help if you liked it or maybe even subscribe to my channel to see more content like this and comment those two things I told you to comment down below like what is your favorite animal to hunt in Call of the Wild and is it possible for the mocha moose to score diamond or is it even possible to make it score lower than what I got such as silver or bronze? Two questions that I'd love to know the answers to so that about wraps it up. Uh, thank you guys again and I will talk to you guys later.